Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, let me thank the members of, of Parliament for their contribution to the budget and for their support. I'm very grateful to have to be working with a group of men and women who understand what we stand for and who we are, and who understand that we are in politics to serve people and not in politics for drama or excitement. I want to thank also the member, the former Prime Minister and my colleague and my friend, the member for View for South, for his insight and for his support of, of, of the budget and for his advice and his counsel on the way forward. I think the member <laughs> bringing his experience and his knowledge to the full and all and every anyone who thinks that I'm in any way I'm in any way not appreciating his counsel is mistaken. Mr. Speaker, there's there are some people who say there is no difference between the Labour Party and the United Workers Party. There are some people who say all politicians are the same, and all of us here are the same, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we are witnessing now in the politics of, in the politics of St. Lucia the worst and the most despicable acts of political behavior ever in the history of solutions. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, never before in the politics have people's families, their children, their friends been, been brought to this level in the politics, Mr. Speaker, never. But Mr. Speaker, I remember again one day <coughs> we were having a discussion about the political tactics for the elections of 2006. And the member for um, Vifot South was the Prime Minister and leader of the party at the time. And there were three of us at the, at the meeting. And one, in, in our exuberance, one of us wanted to bring up an issue in the politics, an issue that had been pushed by, by the press, particularly by one, one newspaper and the leader of the party at the time said we are not going this way we are not going there we are not going there the politics doesn't mean that you have to go there and if i have to lose the election i will not go there <coughs> he was joined the line mr speaker and i took that advice and when i was running the elections again my own personal elections there was a relative of one of my opponents who wrote me a letter about my opponent at the time and I have the letter and I am and I won't even publish it in my book I have the letter Mr. Speaker and I declared that it was not worth it I put that letter in the public domain because politics is temporary you are in power one day and you're out of power another day Mr. Speaker and I think that is the problem with the member from Miku South and the United Workers Party. They do not understand that the people have voted against them and they have to wheel and come back again. So they're not coming back with policy. They're not coming back with ideas. They're not coming back with solutions. What they're coming back with is pure nastiness. If you can allow me to use that word, Mr. Speaker. The most gutter politics ever in the history of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when in these, do, in these days you pull on faith and you circle out people's children and you identify them as that is the child of X and Y, Mr. Speaker, put them in the public domain. When you know out there, there are people who are very emotional, there are people who take the politics to other levels that you may not want. And you circle that, Mr. Speaker, and you publish it, and your leader endorses it, Mr. Speaker, and comes back to the parliament at some time and pretends that he's apologizing on other things when he's the one who is the mastermind behind all these issues, Mr. Speaker. 
And Mr. Speaker, some of us may want to throw it to throw these things across and say, oh, it doesn't matter, all of you are doing that, Mr. Speaker. Some of us may want that, Mr. Speaker, but it has never. Mm -hmm. I have been in the politics for a long time, Mr. Speaker. I have never seen it like that before, Mr. Speaker. But I've said to the men and women on this side that we will not recant. We will not go down to the gutter. We will continue the policies that will support the people of St. Lucia. We will continue to do what we have to do for the people to benefit, Mr. Speaker. And when we say the people, that hurts them. They don't like us to invoke the people, Mr. Speaker. They like us to invoke the people. But we'll continue to invoke the people, Mr. Speaker. And that was what this budget was about. This budget was about the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. This budget was about creating wealth for the people of St. Lucia. In this budget, we tried our best. We tried our best, Mr. Speaker, because I'm not in the business of one-manship. We, we tried our best to see if every sector in the economy could get some support, Mr. Speaker. We tried our best to see if we could ensure that the people who invest in the country, the business people, the hoteliers, who had not paid the taxes. It's important, Mr. Speaker, that the taxes that we removed the VAT on, we removed the, the, the VAT on, the VAT penalties and interest, hotel accommodation tax, PAYE, hotel accommodation tax, withholding taxes, and value-added taxes, Mr. Speaker. These taxes were collected on behalf of the government. And they ought to have been paid. But we understood, and Mr. Listen to me, if you did not pay them, we are saying you waive them, waive, we are waiving all of them. All penalties, all interest, all fines. And we said, pay what you took from the client or the people. So we are saying to you, you are removing a big liability from your books. Because if I remember the practice of accounting, and I'm sure the men remember from for Mikusov, for, sorry, not Mikusov, wow. The member for Sufre will tell you that in the preparation of financial statements, you have to include fines and taxes on on taxes, you have, to, you have to include the fines. So I'm saying you can withdraw it. So you are improving the balance sheet of your business. You are improving the balance sheet of your business and then you're going to be paying the government what they owe. That is for business. That is a major concession to business. Plus the fact of the millions of dollars we give in incentives, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> so no one can say that this party is anti-business. How can we say we are anti-business? But we are saying, when we're giving you that, you have to ensure that building materials, that you are taking 12.5% VAT, we are saying, give that back. Do not charge the people for that. So we don't expect you to put it in your markup. And that is very important, Mr. Speaker. And then I, and I want to be clear. I expect, I expect, and we are going to monitor it. We don't want to interfere in the profit or in the pricing policies of businesses. But we hope, we hope that that 12.5% that we are removing on VAT does not find itself anyway up the line in terms of markup. So even though the prices of these goods increase, once the markup doesn't increase by 12.5%, there ought to be a reduction in, the, in these goods. There ought to be a reduction in these goods, Mr. Speaker. And we hope that the reduction, there's a reduction in plywood, lumber, steel, cement, and galvanized. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure the business people will understand that is the right thing to do, and they are going to do, do it because it's the right thing to do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we heard about the member from Microsoft talking about 
a moratorium on loans as if he was the mastermind behind the moratorium on loans, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the moratorium on loans were given to all islands in the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. There wasn't anything special because of his actions. All islands were given, all islands were given to Mr. Speaker. But there is a basic difference between now and then. At that time, Mr. Speaker, at that time, the whole world was suffering from COVID. Not only St. Lucia, the entire world was suffering from COVID. The entire world. There were concessions given to everybody. Concessions were given to everybody. For the first time, the IMF relaxed almost all the conditionalities on loans. For the first time. For the entire region because of the COVID crisis. So when he comes and speaks about this master management, because, oh my, how does it feel? And he goes and he mentions civil servants' names, Mr. Speaker, and how it was a great, masterful piece by him, he and these civil servants, Mr. Speaker. That's the same man who said to civil servants, mind your business. The same guy, you know, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I want to ask a few questions. Did the member from Microsoft consult, listen to the civil servants when he called Ernst and Young to repair the budget? Yeah. And I remember in my first contribution as leader, of, as leader of the opposition, I said, what is the difference between the budget now and the budget prepared by Ernst and Young? Hansard will show you that, Mr. Speaker. I asked that question. I asked that question. What is the difference? Did he think about the civil servants? Did the member from Mikusov listen to the civil servants when they told him do not change the PPP arrangement for the airport? Did he listen to the IMF when they told him not to change it? The same civil servants he's speaking about, did he listen to them? Did the member from Mikusov, Mr. Speaker, listen to the civil servants when they said to him to continue with the transition team led by Stephen King to, to move Victoria to OK Hospital? Did he listen to the civil servants? He dis, he dis, and he fired Stephen King, Mr. Speaker, and he employed Cayman City, to which we have to pay we have to pay a million dollars a month, Mr. Speaker. Did they listen to the civil servants? Did the member from Microsoft listen to the civil servants when he commissioned a report on St. Jude? And the report said to him, there are issues, but the hospital building can be used as for its original purpose, which is as a hospital. Did they listen to them? He paid a million dollars and he Cast them aside, Mr. Speaker. That's the guy speaking about he talking about civil servants, Mr. Speaker. Did the member from Mikosov listen to the civil servants when they told him, "Do not abandon the Castries Highway, Casting Grosse Highway project, but continue"? Did he listen to the civil servants, Mr. Speaker? This is the man talking about civil servants, Mr. Speaker. Is it the member from Microsoft listen to the civil servants when they told him, do not pay Don Lockerbie $32 million, but instead repair the playing fields? $32 million for two playing fields. Did the member from Microsoft listen to the civil servants when he brought in some people from Singapore to analyze, to do some management consultancy for him, to end up with nothing? Did you listen to civil servants? Exactly. Did you listen to them, Mr. Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, when this bluff and this newfound humility, and some people subscribe to that, and they think the best way to survive is by attacking me personally, the best way to get, around, get away from that, Mr. Speaker, the people of St. Lucia will not be fooled by that newfound humility. <laughs> and regardless, of what is written or what is said, the people of St. Lucia feel it, Mr. Speaker. The people of St. Lucia know that they only fry chicken when election is not, not around the corner. Even the people from St. Lucia don't know that frying chicken in, in forest here or lying down in the back of a van and drive, and drive down back and tell and wave people, Mr. Speaker, is, will, will, will it help you? Comical, or in a sudden you found a new humility. Oh, you're such nice, and you like people so much. All in a sudden, Mr. Speaker, 
I mean, this, 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 this hypocrisy, it won't last, Mr. Speaker. And no matter how you attack me personally, the people will see through you. I am who I am, and I remain who I am, and I was always who I am, Mrs. Mrs. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we talk about management of the economy. COVID, as I said, COVID was there for everyone. But which party had to deal with the Delta variant? Which, who had to deal with the Delta variant? And I remember them saying that there would have been so many dead people by the hospital, outside the hospital. I remember there were people saying that during COVID, because of the Delta variant and because of the mismanagement of the Minister of Health, there would have been people dying in box, in, outside the hospital door, in the corridors. And I remember calling the minister. And I never forget these moments, Mr. Speaker. And the minister was in distress. I said to him, comrade, hold on. Let's stand firm. Hold on. Let's do what we're doing. Because they were saying that the Delta variant would have been so destructive that there would have been people in the corridors of the hospital, Mr. Speaker. I remember that. But we fought it. The Minister of Health and his team. I remember when we go into government, they said, first thing we'd, we'd have done, we would have fired the CMO. You may recall they said to Mr. Speaker, they said so. They said we would have fired everybody. And how you're victimizing people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that we are the government that kept the most civil servants in place than any United Workers Party government. Because we respect the professionalism of civil servants once you prove you're not professional. And I've always said to the civil servants, allow me to be the politician, not you. So, Mr. Speaker, that is our story about, the de uh, uh, about COVID. So don't pretend you had, you had, you were the best manager of COVID. How are you the best manager of COVID? You were the best manager of COVID. And you had absolutely no surpluses in your economy. So you had to go and take the people's money at the NIC. All governments, the governments of Grenada, the governments of Dominica, they paid their people through their surpluses. We had absolutely no surpluses in 2019 when COVID hit. What management of the economy are you talking about? What hotels had started in 2019 and COVID stopped? Since COVID, hotels have been built in Antigua. Hotels have been built in Barbados. Hotels have been built in, in Dominica. Hotels have been built in Jamaica since after COVID because these hotels started before. Which hotel was built in St. Lucia before COVID? And which hotel was built in St. Lucia when the member from Microsoft was the Minister of Tourism? So, Mr. Speaker, when you attack me personally, you have to attack me on the facts. You have to attack me on the facts and the reality. I have said to people, Raise your hand and tell me one thing, one hotel that was built under the Mayor of America. One. And you know what they say? He has vision. Coco had vision too. Vision. Vision for a people and you can't produce anything? We are the ones who have vision. Because whilst we are producing, we are looking to the future, Mr. Speaker. And that is why we ensure that every child will have a laptop. That is vision. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, so this COVID situation, as if only us, only we, ah, COVID, COVID, of course, and we sat here and we supported the government in COVID even at the time. When some of the things they were doing, we thought they were pushing a little bit. We said, no, let, let, let us support it because the means justifies the end. So don't come here and take, take credit for COVID and pretend that COVID stopped you. Of course, COVID impacted on us. What happened before COVID? What happened before COVID? What happened before COVID? Where were the surpluses you had before COVID? You borrowed 220 million dollars, and when we came into government, we only found 18 million dollars to deal with. What what did we do? We had to maneuver. We had to sit in civil servants and talk. 
We had to sit in the capital. We had to be prudent. We had to cut off expenses. That's what we had to do. That's what we had to take it away to us. So, Mr. Speaker, don't pretend because your management of the economy can only be seen in the results of the management. And look at the social and economic review. You, you don't manage economies with your mouth, you know. You don't manage economies by saying you are a good manager. You don't manage economies by saying if, if it was you or when you were there. You manage economies by the reality of the situation. And it is clear, it is clear that when the Labour Party is in power, the figures of the economy are better than on the United Labour Party. 2006, 6% 6 economic growth, the highest in, for a long time, Mr. Speaker. Where is the evidence of the transformation that has taken, that has happened in the United Workers Party when they are in government? Where is the evidence of the transformation? What's the evidence? And that's the question you must ask yourself. So when you boast about economic management, give me the evidence. I'll give you the evidence. In 1997, when we took over the economy of this country, Mr. Speaker, and when the member, member for Viewford South made the point that the economy was in transition, they ridiculed him. Of course it was in transition. It was coming from a situation where we were making at least $3 million a week for bananas to, to nothing. Of course it was in transition. What did we do? We transformed it. Look at this country. Look at the changes that have taken place in this country and tell me which government has been the forefront of these changes. Universal primary school education, universal secondary school education, and now universal health care, the OKU hospital, the Darren Sami field, ground, critical ground, the Viewford Stadium, the East Coast Road resurfacing, the new West Coast Road, the opening up of Karelia and these areas. Which government? The Grosley Highway. Which government? Which government? Which government has transformed this country more than the Central Labour Party? Which government built all the police stations? You talk about security. Which government built all the police stations, Mr. Speaker? And I remember, and fire stations. I remember one day going to Marigo. And when I came to the cabinet, I said to the then Prime Minister, Prime Minister, we must do something about the Marigo police station. I remember that. The Marigo police station was a wooden building. A wooden building, Mr. Speaker. Who transformed it? Talk about government soft on crime. You talk about us, not this Labour Party. Which of my ministers have ever said that they commit a crime on their own? Which, 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 which one? Which of my ministers have ever had any dealings with pig styles, with pig pens? Which, which of them? So when they want, is it Mr. Speaker? What they don't understand? Is anything that they can say negative about us, they've done worse, Mr. Speaker. They've done worse. So don't attack me personally and think you will. Mr. Speaker, that is water on the dashing leaf. I'm a man of the people and I'm a man of God. So, Mr. Speaker, you have to look at the reality of the situation. Who transformed tourism? Who transformed it? Who brought it to the Nature Heritage Tourism Program to convert the tourists to use the natural assets? Who started answering Friday nights? And then, and then, huh? and then, Mr. Speaker, and I remember again there was a member for Viewfort South who sent the then representative Cyprian Lansico to Viewfort to. Barbados to look at oysters and came back and said, and we worked on it to get answer going and then Denry. Who did it? Who transformed this country? Who transformed it? Who gave the most scholarships for students to go and study anywhere in the television's time? Who did it? Now what do you do? And you talk about vision? Who did it, Mr. Speaker? Who did it? So, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> We, we, and who is going to further transform it with the tourism, with, with the tourism development act, which the member for 
cast you serve the Minister of Tourism, Deputy Prime Minister, so clearly enunciated. Who will, who will transform it? Who transformed the CIP into what it is today? But Mr. Speaker, evidence. And that is why they don't like me. Because I always tell them, come with evidence. Does that stammer? Blah, 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 blah. You, you understand? Some of the greatest men in this world stammered. Joe Biden was a, was a stutterer. He admits it. Winston Churchill, Owen Arthur, some prime ministers now. So I don't believe you can break me down when you say, imagine that. People who have absolutely no political metal. People who have swung from side to side. People who are spineless will attack me. You, just up, you think I engage myself in arguments with... Mr. Speaker, who diversified agriculture? Who had to deal with the issues relating to agriculture, Mr. Speaker? Who got all the fisheries complexes going? Who negotiated with the Japanese for the fisheries complexes? Who dealt with these things, Mr. Speaker? Who transformed the agricultural economy of this country? Who transformed it? Mr. Speaker, and now the facts are staring them in the face and they can't deal with it. We, fact, we have the lowest unemployment since 2010, Mr. Speaker. Fact. Fact. And we have the lowest youth unemployment since 2010. Fact. And I've said that we need to do, we need to do better. We need to bring it down to at least single digit figures. And we are working to that, Mr. Speaker. We are working to it. And what do you do? You want to go and you want to attack the member from Viewfort South, Mr. Speaker. The member of Viewfort South can, can defend himself, both in and out of this parliament. But, Mr. Speaker, the member for Cash South made a point. When you become the leader of a government, the leader of people, leader of a government, and, you, and your colleagues, Mr. Speaker. You always think about your colleagues first, because this is a team sport. I've always said to my colleagues, this is a team sport. And I remember very well, in a certain island in the region, one person won by a small island by over 1,200 votes, and the guy next to him lost by less than 12 votes, and they lost the elections. I remember that. I remember that. That has been a lesson for me, Mr. Speaker. So it's better if you are, you are the Prime Minister, <clears throat> you see about your colleagues, and my constituents understand that. And I'm sure, and that is why, in spite of what they say and do, the member for Viewfort South and myself are have been in government from 1997 and God, 1997, and God willing, will be there for a long, long time again. You know why? You know why, Mr. Speaker? You know why? You know why? They have done all kind of things about what Pierre do for Marsha. All, all kind of things. That's it. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Our constituents understand us, understand me, and they trust me. And no matter how they try, this divide and rule strategy, it is not going to work. My purpose, my reason for in politics is to support an ideal, is to support a vision, is to support a people, is to see people do better. Not for me to be able to upstand on another man, not for me to fight as who want to be leader of the party, not for me to decide what Kenny Anthony thought of me. I am in politics because I want to serve the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. That's why I'm in politics. So in spite of what they try, in spite of what they try to divide and rule, in spite of what they try to make me believe I'm a lesser person, I know who I am. And my people who, who I am, and God knows who I am. Nothing can change him, nothing can change him, Mr. Speaker. And whilst I have the honor and the privilege, I will serve the people of St. Lucia with humility and with integrity, Mr. Speaker. That is what I will do. 
So, Mr. Speaker, you, in this budget, we spoke about a health and security level, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the hypocrisy again. The member for Vifat South, what, for, wait, 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 wait from again? <coughs> Miku South came with a Massey bag. He couldn't even carry it. He had somebody carry a Massey bag for him. Poor, poor police officer. He has a poor guy carried a Massey bag. Brings his Massey bag, there's chicken leaking on it. But the hypocrisy in that, the hypocrisy. Who owned supermarkets before? Exactly. That's the hypocrisy. In that Massey bag, in that Massey bag, there were only two items there that, that, that were local. The eggs and, and Baron's pepper sauce. Everything else in that bag was imported. Do we make cheese? Do we make macaroni? Do we make cheese? We make some macaroni. Look, but was there macaroni in, in the bag? No, we don't. All these things were imported. Mr. Speaker, I'm saying today that I'm going to instruct the customs to look at all the duties on food items so that we can make an announcement by the 4th of July. Because we have removed the service charge on all the goods in the bread basket. We removed the service charge. So we're going to look at it comprehensively to see what we can do to support the people of St. Lucia because that food is imported, it's not created locally, Mr. Speaker. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I want to urge people in St. Lucia to start your own little back, back, backyard garden. Start it. Grow like tomatoes. And my colleagues laugh, laugh at me. You know, Mr. Speaker, when I tell them I'm, I'm, I'm a farmer. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not a farmer. I'm not a farmer uh, like a member for, for, for give for self. But, <laughs> but, but, Mr. Speaker, I need to, I plant a few things myself, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. You understand, Mr. Speaker? And when I send them, when I send for them, pictures of my produce. They say I bought it in the market. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, I remember again, their short-sightedness. I made a point about bananas. And, Mr. Speaker, I said again, if there is one that hurt me in the poison in Lucia, it's when I saw the party of the member for Mikosov bring a little child on television and say, Pierre want me to eat banana oil. Pierre want me to eat fig oil. That hurt me, Mr. Speaker. Because I knew very well that was child abuse. Thank you. Using a child to do what you know is not right. Cheap political, Cheap political propaganda. Nastiness. That's what it was. Nastiness. Now, but... Thank God for the people of St. Lucia. They didn't agree with them, but they decided to use bananas to do several things this week. And now, banana is a food of choice for the people of St. Lucia. Just like cassava. Just like cassava. Just like cassava. I was ridiculed when I said we can do things with cassava, flour, etc. I was ridiculed. I'm a bluffer. Why are you talking about me this week? <coughs> Cassava is not only a food of choice, cassava is a health food now for the people of the world, Mr. Speaker. Cassava. And I want to urge farmers to plant more cassava. And let's look to do the byproducts of, of cassava. And this is why we've done, we've changed the Agricultural Diversification Act, where you can get incentives for all sorts of agricultural produce so we can increase our, our agricultural production, Mr. Speaker. And very shortly, very shortly, we're going to have a special thing for farmers. Very shortly, we've seen about the youth, we've seen about the tourists, we've seen about the young people and the computers. We are going to see about farmers very soon. Wait. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, health and security. 
we put a 2.5 percent levy on health on the health and security report. And I want to say to the public of St. Lucia and to the business sector, the 2.5 percent levy definitely will not be on food. As to how it's going to be applied, do you think there is any measure that the Minister of Finance would propose? And after he's taken the decision to propose it, he will not discuss the implementation with, with the private sector? I mean, what? What? You can't discuss it first. And you can't discuss a budget measure first. So when the Chancellor of the Exchequer has his black box, before he goes, they say, I do this, I do that in his black box. When you discuss the measure, when you discuss it with your colleagues and your technocrats, then the way it is ruled out will be discussed. So I'm saying to the private sector and to the public of St. Lucia, next week we am going to instruct for discussions to be held on how the health and security level will be rolled out. There can be nothing to worry about, Mr. Speaker, as far as that's concerned. But, Mr. Speaker, the health and security levy. This year, this year, for health and security measures, we are going to be spending $298 million. <coughs> for health and security measures, all aspects, all aspects, <coughs> all aspects, $298 million, all aspects, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, let me give you some of the things that we are going to do as far as health and security is concerned, Mr. Speaker. Apart from the normal capital and recurrent expenditure. Continuation of the Cuban nurses support, universal health coverage project, Cash's urban, urban polyclinic, rehabilitation of the mental wellness center, health, strengthen, health system strengthening project, emergency response, COVID-19, rehabilitation of St. Jude Hospital, the stadium. I heard they laugh at us when we said we're going to be repairing the little work at the stadium. Reconstruction of the Larry Seuss Wellness Center. We have to pay contributions to the World Health Organization. St. Jude Reconstruction. We still, we have to pay $32.7 million on the box. $32.7 million on the box. Construction of the Sufra Hospital, $2 million. These, all these expenses, the new things we, we are doing for health, Mr. Speaker, for national security, the things we are doing. Regularization of police officers, police officers who were in that system for years and they, they haven't got any status. And the member from Miko North knows that. For the first time, we are going to regularize them. It costs us $282,000 this week. We're going to have two additional probation officers, 60 more police recruits, training for the police, $650,000 from zero in, 20, in, in 2021. Zero is going up 600%. Also, training for the bodily officers, $100,000 for the bodily officers, m m Mr. Speaker. Funds. The rental for the immigration office and I want to tell you Mr. Speaker in spite of what they tell you about the passports and I want to apologize to the public and to the staff in particular for what they went through for passports we have we have issued 22,000 passports already 22,000 passports we have issued and I want to apologize to the public and I want to tell them that they, we are moving, and that was not our creation. We found it. The world did not start in July 2021. The world didn't start there. The world was there before. We didn't start it. We are moving to new headquarters, and I had a conversation with the owners of the building in the presence of the immigration boss, and he said to us, said to us he's trying his best to make sure that they get the building. So I said, I want to thank the staff of the immigration department and apologize to them and thank them and the public that we are, the, the, the premises are being prepared and they are going to be moving there shortly. I want to also want to thank the staff of the National Printing Association, the National Printing Corporation, sorry, the people who printed the estimates, etc. I want to thank them again. They are working on this, on the, 
conditions that are deplorable. I want to sang them and tell them that their new premises, there's money in there for the, for the, for the, for the, for the new premises, Mr. Speaker, and the new premises has, have been identified and they are going to be moving to the, the, the new premises very shortly, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we have $947,000 for purchase of special equipment for the police. And the Taiwanese are helping us in this regard. We already have some, some, some supplies that, that, that arrived this week. And the scanners will be coming very shortly, Mr. Speaker, thanks to the Taiwanese. Repairs, we're spending $7 million on the bodily correctional, correctional facility. That didn't happen. That did not happen from the 26th of July. Meantime, in 18 months, the, 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 the bodily situation deteriorated in 18 months. No, it was left by them. They neglected it. And, and we met the correctional officers. If you have stories, Mr. Speaker, if you have stories of what these people went through with that former Minister of Justice who opened in his mouth now and talked, Mr. Speaker, but Mr. Speaker, I ignore that. That's noise. I remain focused and I ignore noise. You understand? If you, if you heard the stories of the correctional officers, if you heard the stories of the police officers about the former Minister of, of Justice, your heart will, will, will hurt you. But I'm not going there. I'm not going there, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to spend $7 million on bodily this year. $7 million on bodily this year. In terms of police stations, after we build the police stations, they allow it again to deteriorate nothing. They used to have dinners to help the police station dinners. That's how, you know, we have an allocation of $1.8 million to repair the police stations, Mr. Speaker. You see, and we talk about police, police, who has shown more care and attention to the police than the Social Labour Party? The records are there. Who the records are there? The history is clear. History is clear. I always tell them to beat me with facts. Not if what you think, what your mind tell you, your vision. Beat me with facts. Who has done more for the police than the St. Lucia Labour Party winning government? When we were building Baudelaire, they said we were building a five-star hotel. They ridiculed us. They said they ridiculed us. They said we were building a five-star hotel. You understand? We were ridiculed. I remember that. I was there. I was there. So, Mr. Speaker, this time, right now, we're going to assist the, 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 the police in other situations that can't be said in public. You understand? But that's what we are about. That's what we are about, Mr. Speaker. What we are about. We we're going to deal with the with the rehabilitation to the first district court. And who did that? These things didn't happen from the 21st of July, 2021. They were there a long time before, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, in terms of health and security, we understand that the health situation in this country has to be improved. We understand that. We are cognizant of the fact that there is need for our health offerings to be better. But I'm, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to you, in spite of all our shortcomings, I can tell you that the people, the professionals, and the people at the hostel in St. Lucia, they do a very good job 90% of the time. And the cost is what's important. You know, we come here and we talk, we talk, we talk, we talk. Because many of us, yeah. all of us, the general public, we can't afford to send our father in a helicopter uh. for, to, for, for a lifted for treatment abroad. Yeah. Nothing wrong in that, you know. Yeah, now, don't get me wrong because they're tired of misquoting me. <clears throat> Nothing wrong in that. If you can afford to send your relative abroad for, for, for treatment, you must do that. 
can afford. But you must look at the cost, Mr. Speaker. The cost. Look at the cost of health care abroad. And think about what you pay at the OKE OK hospital, sometimes for the same outcomes. Look at the cost. And the men and women who work in these hospitals, they deserve all the accolades and the thanks and the gratitude that we can give them. The nurses and the doctors, Mr. Speaker. And I know that, that we made a promise to the nurses and the doctors. We said we'd have done something. We did it for the vehicles, but I tell them, hold on, when things work and the Minister of Health will, will not know, when things work, Mr. Speaker, we are going to show the doctors and nurses in a special way how we appreciate them. In a very special way. In a very special way, Mr. Speaker. In a very special way. We're going to show them how much we appreciate them, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, everybody talks about health care. But we must find means of paying for health care. We have to fund it. It's expensive. People don't want to study medicine for seven years to come back and work for thank you. <coughs> we have to fund it. We have to fight against competition for our nurses. We have to keep our nurses here. We have to do it. So we have to fund it, Mr. Speaker. Nobody, nobody is happy to pay more taxes. So under the circumstances, I must say that we need improvement. But under the circumstances, I think we are trying our best. And we can't continue to criticize and condemn. But we must work together to improve the health outcomes in this country. And this is what this budget intends to do, Mr. Speaker, to improve these health outcomes. Of course, there are issues. Of course, sometimes people behave unprofessionally. Of course. But the majority of the cases, the majority of the people who, who go to the hospital, and what do they pay? That's the question, you know. How much do they pay for it? There are people I know. I know one person personally who came to St. Lucia, a lady, to do a, a particular operation here because she says in St. Lucia is the best to do it. Yes. You won't believe it. Came here for the cost. I know people who leave the United States and come here for dental treatment because it's cheaper. I know that. So let's not condemn, condemn, condemn for, for, for our politics. Let's work together to improve, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so the levy, the health and security heavy will help. I said we have $398 million being spent on health and security. We're hoping to bring in $33 million from the health and security levy. A drop in the ocean, but it will help, Mr. Speaker. It will help. Mr. Speaker, we spoke about helping people, Mr. Speaker. And the member for, 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 the member for library made a point about the budget gives us so large amount to everybody. There's a vexing issue of contracts $10,000 and below, Mr. Speaker. And I want to make it abundantly clear. It is, that is not only for construction contracts. It's for everybody. So if you're a musician, you're there. If you're a caterer, you're there. Any service that you provide for the government, once the government is paying you, the 10% will not be taken from you if your contract is $10,000 and below. I want to make it abundantly clear. It is not only contractors. It's anybody who provides a service for the government. And the legislation will show that, Mr. Speaker, as time goes on. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> housing. Again, Mr. Speaker, we know that <coughs> the Minister of Housing <coughs> sometimes gets into trouble with me for moving too fast. But, Mr. Speaker, it's because of his urge and his desire to do well. <clears throat> but again, Mr. Speaker, and the member for, for Cast Yourself, Mouth, mouth Open Secret Job Out. But, <coughs> and Mr. Speaker, there is something that would be so big in housing, I'm afraid to say. I'm afraid to say. But, I can tell the public of St. Lucia, just wait. The mayor for Kashi Sahib told you, I no, I'm not announcing anything until I see the money. That was the case in the grant. <laughs> I said to the, to the Minister of Commerce, 
I'm not going anywhere and say anything about grants unless the money in the bank. When the money goes in the bank, we sell about grants and now people collecting the grant money for the MSME project. So the housing, the housing, there is something not to use a pipeline phrase. That pipeline thing is a thing that's used too often. There's an initiative for housing that is, will be so comprehensive and will deal with so many of our issues, not all, that I'm saying to the public, just wait, just wait. Give me 10 weeks. 10 weeks? 10, 10 weeks. <laughs> Member of Castro is East, you have 10 minutes left. That's about 15 minutes. Member for Castro South. Mr. Speaker, I wish to invoke Standing Order 4210 to allow the Honorable Member for Castro East an additional 15 minutes to complete his presentation. Honorable Members, the question is that Standing Order 3210 be invoked to allow the Member for Castro East an additional 15 minutes in which to complete his presentation. And I'll put a question as many as that opinion say aye. aye. As many of a contrary opinion say no, I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, tonight we have a very important event, the George Charles Lecture. George Charles, again, they want, they want to hide the history. They want to hide the history. George Charles was the founder of the Labour Party. George Charles is one of the most progressive leaders we ever had. But they want to hide his history. In fact, they say the reason why they don't is because they say because they say he died poor. So that's why they want to hide the Mr. Speaker. But this Labour Party will always honor George Charles. So there's a lecture tonight, Mr. Speaker, at the Financial Center. So this is why colleagues want to go to the lecture, Mr. Speaker. And I want to invite everybody. So, Mr. Speaker, we we speak about housing, Mr. Speaker. So this housing, that housing initiative is going to touch everyone. Everyone, Mr. Speaker. And I said, give me 10 to 12 weeks, and we'll announce it, Mr. Speaker. But I can say to the public of St. Lucia that there is something big coming for them in housing, Mr. Speaker. Something big coming, Mr. Speaker. So, so uh, Mr. Speaker, this budget aims at doing a few things. It aims at stabilizing the economy, retaining the growth, creating wealth, and ensuring that the less privileged among us get some support and some help, Mr. Speaker. That, that, that is why, Mr. Speaker, that, that is why. In terms of social interventions, Mr. Speaker, in terms of social interventions, we have 25.9 million dollars in terms of direct poverty support. 25 million dollars. We've increased public assistance by 5.8 million dollars, Mr. Mr. Speaker. But that's not all. We have 10 million dollars in meeting the needs of the most vulnerable. 10 million dollars, and we have 8 million dollars in the home care program. And every day, colleagues want ask for, for more home caregivers. And again, that was under the, 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 the stewardship of, of the member for Viewfort. Some of Mr. Speaker. <coughs> again, another thing, they've forgotten our education. They, they've forgotten that. That's why they have to attack me personally. Because they've forgotten these things, Mr. Speaker. We just got another 5,000 lab, 5,000 Chromebooks two weeks ago. That is 10,000. Very soon. Our vision, and that's what vision, that's what vision is, you know. Vision not talking if an accent. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that's not vision. Vision is action. Vision is every child. Even children of the people who do not support us. <clears throat> Even children of people who defame us on Facebook. Their children will have a laptop or a Chromebook to go to school to put them in the modern world, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the policy that will transform St. Lucia is the policy of one university graduate per household. That's going to transform St. Lucia. That's vision. And I want to thank the Minister of Education for running with it. 
running with that, with that understanding, that education, Mr. Speaker, one university graduate per household. And this year, we put in half a million dollars for it. <clears throat> this year. But the Ministry of External Affairs has been, have, they've been instructed to work with governments to see if they can augment the scholarships that we get for this country. And the Minister is trying his best. That's what we're all about. That's our vision. Not talking nonsense. That's our vision. Giving a, sending every child to school. Giving every child an education. That's our vision. That's what our vision is all about, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the National Housing Program. I spoke about housing, uh, housing a while ago, Mr. Speaker. Very soon, we're going, to be re we're going to be recommencing our housing program where we try to assist people to fix the houses. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, these, that program is for the poor, the low income, the differently abled, Mr. Speaker, and the desolate. <coughs> so it's not a program where we build houses for people. It's a program where we repair houses for people who really can't afford it, Mr. Speaker. And we've spoken about the distress fund. The distress fund is back, Mr. Speaker, and many people have benefited from the distress fund, Mr. Speaker. So, so Mr. Speaker, this budget tends to create the issues that I spoke of, Mr. Speaker. But there are certain things that we, we, we didn't mention. The Integrity Commission. Remember we spoke about the Integrity Commission? We have allocated $50,000 to improve the Integrity Commission, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have a special crime initiative, 850, a special crime initiative, Mr. Speaker, where we're going to help non-state actors who are, who are engaged in crime reduction. We're going to help them, we're going to give them some money, Mr. Speaker. People involved in crime reduction, I don't want to mention any names, but the people who have been working constantly, sometimes with, the, with, the, with their lives, working their lives at, at stake to go in to deal with the crime reduction, since we're going to help them at least with the transportation, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this year, it's my pleasure to announce that we are going to complete our ascension to the Caribbean Court of Justice. And there is an allocation for us to complete that. that, that is, and it's my dream, Mr. Speaker. It's my dream. It's our dream that when we begin work on our new halls of justice, we're going to have our ascension to the Caribbean Court of Justice at the same time, Mr. Speaker. That's my dream. And Mr. Speaker, we have, we have, to, we have an allocation of $5 million for rental of the Orange Grove Plaza. I should have Mr. Housing will jump, will, 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 will leave it. <laughs> the Minister of Housing, his head will, he'll, he'll poke up when I say that. Because I know where he stands on that, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> we have to allocate $5 million for the, $5 million, Mr. Speaker, for the Orange Grove situation that they put us in. But we are a government of integrity. That's what, we have to protect the good name of this country. And that is why we have to pay Cayman City. We have to respect the good name of our country. This country doesn't belong to any member in the parliament. It belongs to the people of St. Lucia, and we are custodians for the people of St. Lucia, and we have to protect the name of this country, Mr. Speaker. So we have $5 million to deal with that in the meantime. Then, Mr. Speaker, we have we had an issue with wages for people in the government information technology, the gifts, which again we inherited. We are going to, to be paying it, Mr. Speaker. Training the staff for the for the, the Department of Gender, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are increasing our location to the legal aid office because people must get proper legal aid. We're increasing that allocation, Mr. Speaker. We're also increasing the allocation being paid to, to, to lawyers who defend, who, who are appointed by the state to defend the murder people in murder trials because we believe in a, in a, in a fair justice system. So it is difficult to get representation for them because I said the money was not enough. We're going to be increasing that so they can get some more money, Mr. Speaker. We're going to look at the public, public prosecution office to see how we can improve it. There's money there for that, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, there's a stipend for fire licensing board. A stipend. But you heard what his party said? His party said that we were giving people licenses for money. Mr. Speaker, that's how these people then I create people, Mr. Speaker. You're speaking about people in a licensing board who have not even been appointed, but you're saying that collusion, 
and we get, and we are people are paying for these licenses, Mr. Speaker. And when they say these things, they don't retract it, you know. They just say it. Spoil your try to spoil your good name and leave it. Just say it, Mr. Speaker. So right now, the firemen, the firm licensing board is going to be <coughs> is going to be put in, in into effect, and there's a stipend for them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are we have put increase the bodily last week we sent 25 new recruits to bodily we have an allocation there for a staff doctor and a remedial teacher a nurse and a clinical worker to increase the staff at bodily mr speaker so we're going to have a doctor a remedial teacher a nurse and a clinical worker mr speaker for the body institution to make bodily a pure a, a rehabilitative place mr speaker mr speaker the price of food, and that's another problem. Supplies and food for bodily. We have to increase that, that, that allocation this year. But I'm pleased to tell you that under the new leadership, bodily has begun to plant their own food. And I understand they are doing very well, Mr. Speaker, in doing their own food, Mr. Speaker. And, and we have $100,000 for staff training for, for bodily, and another $60,000 for maintenance of staff, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I was told about bodily that there's something called a skills allowance, which is $150 per month, Mr. Speaker. And the last government refused to give it. So what happens is that the people at bodily, the inmates, who have skills, they need somebody to help them to that if they are carpenters or electricians or masons, this is the boy to help them so they can do the work there. For $150 a month. And when these guys talk, when and the minister will tell you, when these guys talk about what they did and how they performed, they refuse to pay these people $150 a month, a skills allowance, so they could work with the inmates to improve the situation bodily. Well, we are going to, to be paying it, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I forgot to tell the fire service. I know the fire service always say that we, we've forgotten them. We have $150,000 to regularize the status of fire officers. I'm sure the fire officers will be very happy to hear that, Mr. Speaker. We are also seeing about the fire officers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I spoke about the rental of premises for the immigration uh, uh, for the immigration officers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we also have, I, said, I spoke about status of police constables. I spoke about the major crimes units. We're going to have two pro new probation officers, Mr. Speaker. We have to ensure, you know, Mr. Speaker, all the talk these guys are talking about, they said when they came, they, 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 there were no boats, etc. You know these boats, they have no insurance? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what you say? Ooh, papa. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you know that? You know they had these fellas on the, on, on the road, on the sea, on the high seas. So we have to allocate $627,000 for insurance of the new marine fleet, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the fingerprint situation, we, we have to deal with Mr. Speaker. And then we have an outreach program for people in the community, for the police to deal with people in the community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we're giving the marketing board a $250,000 subvention for them, Mr. Speaker. And we also have to deal, we also give $10,000 for farmers with disabilities. We give, we can, that helps them, Mr. Speaker, ensures them. And that doesn't, that doesn't speak about all the increase in grants that we have given to, to, to the other bodies, Mr. Speaker. We've given, we've increased every association except, I think, one or two. We've increased the allocation from $1.8 million in 22-23 to $2.2 million in 23-24, Mr. Speaker. You said that apart from the $25 million he's spending, that's what we are giving to charitable groups and, and organizations, Mr. Speaker. The Ministry of Commerce, they, they speak about um, subsidies to food. We're giving them $1 million extra to assist them in outstanding debts. And they need more. But increasing the subvention to the the export exports and lucia they, they, they're doing a very good job but we have to give them some some more support mr speaker we a trade consultant for the for to regularize the, the the cannabis industry mr speaker 
this week at the Ministry of in Infrastructure, we, uh, we have $3 million more in road maintenance. We increased it. $1.6 million increased for the caretaker program, Mr. Speaker. We're increasing the subvention to, to the NUC. The NUC has a very important job to do of $250,000. The allocation of the NUC is increasing. And I want to implore the NUC to work in the ministry so we can deal with the Electricity Supply Act. St. Lucia is losing its competitiveness because of the cost of electricity. We have to ensure that we deal with that Electricity Supply Act, Mr. Speaker. And I am putting the minister and the NUC on notice that we have to bring these negotiations to an end very, very shortly, Mr. Speaker. They must come to an end. I know they, they are working, but we have to work harder. We have to, we have to ensure that we bring, we bring these negotiations to an end, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, the, street, the street lighting program, we have increased it by a million dollars. And I know that's a vexing issue for all of us. We need lights, Mr. Speaker. For once, I hope, once and for all, we'll solve that KLED program. And again, that, the, that member from Microsoft, we had an arrangement, a loan, properly completed with the CDB. When they came into power, they stopped it for the Pajora letter. They stopped it, and they want you to forget the Pajero letter. Attacking me personally will not make the Pajero letter run away. Don't attack me personally. Don't let Pajero letter, Mr. Speaker. And all those who believe, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Tourism, $8,000 for $8 million for St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Um, we going $100,000 for emancipation day activities, $100,000 for labor day activities. And we started last, we started yesterday. It's very good labor day activities, Mr. Speaker. But it was, it was on a low key. And again, we need to thank the workers of this country for their contribution to the, to the, the, the economy, Mr. Speaker. And I have put on notice that we want to start negotiations very early with the public servants so we can come to an amicable solution at the shortest possible time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the Department of Labor, Mr. Speaker, payment of medical and, and insurance education grant to the Civil Service Association, subvention to the Trade Union Federation, $60,000 for the establishment of a minimum and livable wage commission. That commission is meeting, Mr. Speaker. We need to have a minimum slash livable wage for the workers of St. Lucia. We, we are just, we are not going to just impose it. We're going to have discussions, but these discussions cannot be open-ended. They have to end at some, at some point. So we're going, to, we're going to be discussing the private sector. We're going to be discussing everybody so we can come to an amicable solution as far as a minimum or equitable wage is concerned, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education, we are working with Monroe College. $1 million for, for the Monroe College, the Monroe College Partial Scholarship, Mr. Speaker. Five first generation scholarships. Half a million for the one graduate per household, Mr. Speaker. And the Minister of Education um, for the increasing in stipend for students who got the Morocco scholarship, the Morocco scholarship, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, University of the West Indies, our university, the university that many of us inside there went to, the member for, for Viewford South, the member for Central Castries, the member for Buford North, the member for Denry North, the member for Castro South, and myself, Mr. Speaker. All of us graduates of the University of the West Indies. But there are some people in government who believe that the University of the West Indies is second, second fill. They, the same way they laughed at Sir Arthur Lewis. They laughed at the University of the West Indies, Mr. Speaker. We owe the University of the West Indies about $26 million. And there's another vaccine issue, which is the land, the money we owe people for when we acquire the land. We have to deal with these two issues, Mr. Speaker. So we have a little a $2 million to reduce the arrears owed to the University of the West Indies, Mr. Speaker. 
So, Mr. Speaker, we we helping the the four new daycare centers, Mr. Speaker, helping them with a stipend to help them in their operational expenses, and we have hundred fifty thousand dollars for the foreign language program, Mr. Speaker, to help children because we believe that right now, if you cannot speak a foreign language. For a young generation, you are almost illiterate, Mr. Speaker. You must be able to speak a foreign language. So we're helping in that regard. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Mr. Speaker, $400,000 for uh, expenses for internationally of the youth. And then we also have a semi-pro football league. We're helping the Ministry with some money for that, Mr. Speaker. And the Julian Alfred situation, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, what we are doing is and the youth economy, which is, I'm very pleased with how that project is going. I'm very pleased with Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, in in Member for Castries, you have five minutes left. Yes, Mr. I'll, I'll end. So, Mr. Speaker, so you see reason why the member from Microsoft and the surrogates are so desperate. You see the reason why? The reason is this government is, is performing way beyond their imagination, Mr. Speaker. When we started, they said that we'd be fighting among ourselves. They said we'd not be able to pay civil servants. They said the economy would collapse, Mr. Speaker. Right now, Mr. Speaker, none of that happened. So they are desperate. They and the surrogates are desperate. I have said to them, let us argue policy. Let us discuss policy. Let us discuss what, let us discuss how we can do better. But what it has gone to personal tax, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, let me put them on notice. Let me put them on notice now. <clears throat> you can say whatever you want about me. Whatever you want. About me, about my family, everything. These things are aimed to do me both personal and physical injury. That's, what, that's the aim to create personal and physical injury to me and members of my family. Mr. Speaker, I will never yield my conviction to improve the life of the people of this country. I will never yield, Mr. Speaker. You will never be able to embarrass me. You will never be able to say I stammer. You will never be able to say, you will never be able to make memes of me to make me appear as to what I'm not. You'll never be able to say things about me that are not true, that will ever affect me, Mr. Speaker. I go on my conscience and the support of the men and women in the, in the Labour Party, and particularly men and women in this cabinet, Mr. Speaker. I believe that they have the same conviction as me to improve the lives of the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. I believe that, I believe that. So, Mr. Speaker, I'll continue to work with the members of this cabinet and the members of parliament, Mr. Speaker, and the people who are interested in the welfare of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the life of the regular person in St. Lucia improves, Mr. Speaker, that their education improves, that they grow up, that the young people grow up with a sense of dignity a sense of pride, a sense of understanding their worth and their place in the history of St. Lucia and their place in the history of the Caribbean. That's what I stand for. So your noise will not deter me, Mr. Speaker. Your noise will not deter me. I'm a proud man, Mr. Speaker. I'm proud of my achievements. I'm proud of where I came from. I'm proud of who I am. And I'm proud of where I'm going, Mr. Speaker. I will not be in that job forever. I will not be in that job forever. That job will pass me. But when I leave, when I leave, I would have known that I've made a contribution to my country, together with my colleagues, to improve the lives of the people of St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.